Mike is a multi-instrument musician and the president of High Unites Music Club. He has won various awards and performed live at events and gatherings throughout his career, playing the ukulele, bass guitar, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and the kalimba. His passion and drive for making music continues to inspire others, and that is what makes him the inspiring individual that he is today. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of In Love With Me, where we feature inspiring individuals who will share their amazing stories. I am your host, Mafe Yunon Velasco, and for this series, our topic is being empowered during quarantine. For this episode, we have an empowered young man, musician, coach, and president of High Unite Music Club to motivate us to take action. So without further ado, let's welcome the amazing and handsome young man, Michael Christian Velasco. Hi, Mike. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. So welcome to the show, Christian. I've been really excited to have you on here because to me, even though that I know you very well, I'm very inspired on how you are be uh, becoming this inspiring young man. Um, I know you've been busy during this quarantine period, but before that, let's talk about on how you are the inspiring, empowered young man that you are today. Can you share with us your journey? Okay, so um, I believe that I'm the empowered man today because of my love for music. And although being empowered, being called an empowered man is a special title, I feel like I wouldn't be at that, at the point where I am right now if it wasn't for my mentors, like uh, my parents. And yeah, it's, it's a really special title to have and mm -hmm. to be called. And I feel like even though I'm only 18 years old, I feel like I have a lot more years to find out about myself and just mm -hmm. the world in general. Mm -hmm. And you have sports and music that you're very passionate about. So let's talk about um, how did you start loving music? Um, it came about when I was in around second or third grade. Um, I started playing just the piano just out of curiosity, because I was always around it. And um, it, I really, yeah. <laughs> that's my, my first piano that I got from my dad. Yeah. And um, yeah, it really sparked interest in me. I like, I like learning songs on it. And at that time, I didn't put too much thought into it. I just thought, oh, okay, I, I like this. This is fine, I'm gonna keep doing it. Mm -hmm. But then uh, after that, I believe it was grade four, grade five, um, my school had a new music subject mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to play the clarinet. So I was part of the wind, the wind instrument group. So mm -hmm. yeah, I played the clarinet for about a few months. And then after that, I moved to the Philippines and I kind of took a break on playing music and mm -hmm. instruments in general until I was 17. Um, yeah. when I was 17, I watched, um, just a cartoon show where the main character had a ukulele and that one really sparked interest in me even more than the piano. So yeah. on my 17th birthday, I got a ukulele and then I was just glued to it. Uh, couldn't get my hands off of it. I played it every day. And after a while, uh, my parents helped me get little performances at little get togethers, parties. And that's where I realized like, like I can really do this. So I wanted to really get better and really pursue this. Mm -hmm. So after that, um, I believe my 18th birthday, mm -hmm. I got a, a bass guitar 
and that was like my first introduction to electric instruments. Yes. And I learned a new side of music, which is the rhythm section, mm -hmm. which was not, which is pretty different from the ukulele because it's not about you. It's about accompanying someone, mm -hmm. uh, making music with someone else rather than just yourself. And then after mm -hmm. that, my 19th birthday, I got my electric guitar, and that one just was like none of the other instruments that I had. It really like changed my musical side of mm -hmm. things, and it really just blew up for me. I picked mm -hmm. it up, and I got to, thanks to my knowledge of playing the ukulele and the bass, it really helped me mm -hmm. like get a head start on the guitar. So I feel like my past experiences have helped me a lot mm -hmm. in a way of my playing style today. Mm -hmm. So up until now, I still play, especially during this quarantine. And mm -hmm. uh, I just make the most out of this time that I have mm -hmm. at home. So yeah. I try to learn new songs every day. And it, this quarantine helps a lot because it gives me a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. so, you know, as much as that, uh dad, your mom, or, or my, myself are the ones that taught you <laughs> or are musically inclined. I know your mom plays the keyboard, the piano. I'm pretty sure that's where you, you found the love for the keyboard. But with the guitar and the ukulele, you know, as much as we want to take credit for that, that's all you. How did you find time or how did you find um, a tutor or what kind of platform did you see that helped you teach yourself your because you're self-taught right yes so platforms that are used mainly youtube um if not youtube then i i just go on google and search like chords for this song or a tab for this song mm -hmm. and then it would just be there right in front of me then i just do my best to replicate the song that i was trying to learn mm -hmm. um other than that I listen to a lot of music as well. If there's no tutorials, then I, I listen to the song, try to learn it by ear, mm -hmm. which is not the easiest, but I, I still try my best. Mm -hmm. Usually for um, like a solo or just normal songs that I try to pick up and mm -hmm. try to learn, play for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, apart from, from being a musician, you're also into sports. You're also an athlete. So can you share with us on how you started uh, playing and coaching basketball? Basketball, um, it's always been around me as a, ever since I was born because of my dad. Mm -hmm. and, and I felt like I only, well, I only started playing um, <laughs> really competitively around, I think I was 14, maybe 15. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really, really loved basketball. I, I still do, mm -hmm. but I was really into it then. And it's just, I still play today uh, with my mm -hmm. basketball, it's just in my, in my life. Mm -hmm. I know before basketball, you were also into athletics. Did you want to share those moments too? Uh, can you repeat that? Kind of choppy. Yeah. Um, before basketball, you were also part of athletics. Do you remember that, those times? You had a passion for uh, athletics? I was also part of the baseball team. Mm -hmm. Yes, that too. Yeah. I was also part of a baseball team and a soccer team before mm -hmm. when I was like grade one. Um, I competed in like small tournaments in my old school. Mm -hmm. um, just of like running like races. And I was also part of the track and field team in Castro Valley as well. Mm -hmm. I was... I, uh, I was part of the shot put yes. and the javelin and discus throwing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a pretty fun experience for me as well. Mm -hmm. And then, so now that you're also a coach, you coach basketball. How did that begin, and uh, how did that help 
shape you? Um, well, thanks to my dad's academy, the uh, Boost uh, Velocity Skills Academy. Uh, that's mm -hmm. where it started. My dad just he just said, can you help me out? Because we got too many kids mm -hmm. to coach. So I just, I already knew the routine that we had. So I, it came naturally. And then after that, um, it's just been pretty consistent. I've been coaching a lot lately. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's pretty much how it started. And I saw a picture earlier. Of course, you know, it was a memorable picture or experience for you with a, with a certain school that we partnered with. Can you share about that? Oh, sorry, you're, you're, you're choppy again. <laughs> yeah, so there was a picture that just went past uh, of you and one of your students. Can you share that experience and uh, how did you meet the student? Okay, um, so Busa had an opportunity to coach uh, children with special needs, mm -hmm. and they're from the One World School for Special Children. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Sh that was um, Shaw, and he was part of that the group that we had to coach. And yeah. uh, he's a pretty special student to me because um, he we would it would just be us two us two. And then we we just be on the sideline working on special drills. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it wasn't easy. Uh, I had to really be patient with him. Um, but slowly, after every training, we were able to bond more, and we were able to communicate mm -hmm. a lot clearer than the first day. And it's just been it's, it's it was really fun having to teach those those kids and seeing on their face you made a difference in my life. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, you being empowered as a sports coach and all your experiences from uh, playing sport really helped you uh, transition on learning music? Uh, yeah, I think it really did because through sports, um, Sports has taught me discipline ships and it's taught me to be, um, yeah, mainly disciplined and because uh, in, in music, in, in teaching rather, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of discipline and uh, patience as well mm -hmm. when sharing your knowledge with others. And I feel like I, I really implemented that in my teaching from sports. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been coaching basketball? Coaching basketball, I think since 2015. So that was about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And then now you're also teaching music. Yes. And how long have you been teaching music? I think I've been doing that for two to three years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you are now the president of the High Unite Music Club. How did that come about? So that I've been part of the music club just as a regular attendee, and well, what they've apparently they've been observing some of their their students, and I, I guess I was one of them. And then there was the our president, our, our president at that time stepped down, and they needed a new vice president, so they appointed me. And then after the, a year or so, um, our president at that time again stepped down so it became me as vice president mm -hmm. so that's when that's how it pretty much came about and mm -hmm. it's it's been a really fun experience um i was able to have three like gatherings in the span of three months mm -hmm. and we were able to have like a an original song competition and we had real judges we had one judge from singapore who was who competed in like professionally Mm -hmm. And she was able to judge us as well, and it was it was just an overall really fun experience to mm -hmm. to lead such a group of people like that. Mm -hmm. 
and I saw also in your pictures that you performed so many events. Which events or which particular event was mo the most memorable for you so far? Um, I probably have to say my little performance with uh, Paul Marnie mm -hmm. and uh, his band, Blue Rascals. That was, that was a really fun experience for me. One of my most memorable like performances. Mm -hmm. uh, we played two songs, both by John Mayer. They're Gravity and mm -hmm. Slow Dancing in the Burning Room. Mm -hmm. It was just overall like really fun. It's, I felt like um, all my practicing and just yeah, just practicing really paid off at that mm -hmm. moment. And it was just one of the most fun, like musical moments I had performing. Mm -hmm. So speaking of practicing, how many hours of the day do you need to practice for an event or maybe learning a new song? Um, a new song, depending on the difficulty of it, maybe two hours, three hours, but if it's like a whole set, it would probably take me a bit more, like five, just to really mm -hmm. practice the song and iron out like the, the little details that you that I'd want to really punch out. Mm -hmm. But just overall practicing and throughout the day, uh, just as much as I can. Usually at nighttime, after the whole day is finished, after I've studied mm -hmm. and I've got everything done, Mm -hmm. That's when usually when I just plug in my guitar and try to learn as many songs as I can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a question here for you. How has music shaped your view in life? Um, that's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like music has changed my life through just seeing the, the simple things in mm -hmm. life. Uh, through music, I like little details in a song, and it really helped me appreciate the small things in life as well. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you, would you say that when you feel, let's say you have an off day, you know, we're humans too, when you're unmotivated, do you turn to music to help yourself feel good again? Oh, yeah. Ab yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like music takes me to a place um, that no, uh, not, nothing else can take me to. Uh, it's just a, a good stress reliever for me, just playing any instrument um, or just like jamming to any song or backing track. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just, it helps me, um, I'd like to say find myself or like mm -hmm. just learn more about myself and it just helps me in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And in your bucket list, Mike, who are the top five that you would wish to collaborate with? Who are top they? Top five collaborations. Um, I probably have to go with uh, John Mayer. He's like my all time favorite guitarist, real inspiration mm -hmm. to me. And then, um, it's just like the legendary guitarists, but like a lot of them aren't with us today, like B.B. King, mm -hmm. uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, Joe Bonamassa. Um, some of the guitarists today as well, like I'd say Tora Dash, she's really good. Um, mm -hmm. Seth Rosenblum, Jude Smith, Chris Stone, Kingfish. Uh, not only guitarists, but I also listen to other musicians like uh, drummers, bass players, mm -hmm. horn players, uh, drummers like Anderson Pack. That would be a really fun collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, horn players like John Coltrane, uh, bass players like Joe Dart, uh, Pino Palladino. It's just there's a lot of musicians that I listen to that I like to collaborate. Mm -hmm. That would be a really fun experience. So, Mike, what would you uh, express to people or the young people that want to start learning an instrument? How can they start? Or what would you recommend for them to do? Um, maybe steps. Um, I feel like 
rushing into learning an instrument can get you right, not motivate you in the right way. So yeah, baby steps and just really take your time to get to know your instrument, get mm -hmm. to know your style of music, and to just understand the sound that you want to go for, mm -hmm. the sound that you want to create. So yeah. So five years from now, Mike, where do you see yourself? Uh, five years from now, I I would have just graduated college, and I'd see myself um, in a band, sharing, playing our music, and sharing our music with others. Mm -hmm. And if you had your wish on a venue to play in the future, where would it be, and why? From Alex. <laughs> um. I definitely want to play like at one of the major like stadiums, like Arena here, maybe Malavija Arena. But in the mm -hmm. states, um, of course, the Staples Center and Madison Square Garden; those would be like the top places. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those those two would probably be the main things. Mm -hmm. Yes, dreams can come true, Mike. Just claim it in the universe. Let's give some shout outs to people who are tuned in right now. Hello there, uh, Thomas De La Cruz. Hi, Alexandra, Izzy, all the way from Sydney. Of course, Nico, uh, supporting his brother, Ella Garcia from Singapore. Hello there, Manel. Uh, hi, Joy, Joy Cortez. The Joy is watching you, Mike. Um, who else do we have here? Uh, okay, so so another one here. How has your siblings inspired you in the things you do today? Good question. <laughs> um, yeah, that is a good question. Um, I think my siblings inspired me just by pushing me to become like a better musician, just in general. They keep mm -hmm. me in check and. Uh, just watch out for me just as I do for them. And yeah, they just, they inspire me in a lot of ways as well. And I know that um, you would like to perform for us real quick. What song will you perform? Uh, I'll just play like a quick um, little song. It's by John Mayer. <laughs> Don't okay, Mike. Stop this train. Okay. So, yeah, I'll just play a little bit of it. All right. Thanks, Mike. And for everyone out there, just to yeah, yeah, to share with you guys a fun fact. Mike is actually the one behind the music for In Love With Me. If you can hear in the introduction, he composed that music, the background music that is playing. So um, I hope you guys can tune in for the rest of the episodes because it's uh, Mike that makes it more exciting. So with that, Mike, I know that you have ongoing classes. Uh, you wanna share what you have coming up? 
Um, yeah, so this July I have um, a summer workshop where I teach the basics of ukulele and guitar. Uh, it's a 10 session day, 10 session workshop, and it uh, starts on July 4th, this, on a Saturday. So for more information, you can check out um, Mafia Management Consultancy's page where my flyer is posted. Mm -hmm. And yeah, hope to see you guys there. Yeah, and, and for sure, I will also add Mike's um, Instagram handle so that you can also reach out to him, maybe ask for advice on how to start um, playing an instrument or what kind of platforms that are out there that he has been using. And just any advice, you know, from a young man like this who is very inspiring already. And we are excited, Mike, to see you grow some more and, and inspire the world with your music as well as your um, um, personality because uh, I've heard so many great feedback from people that you are humble you are uh, just laid back and I see that your patience is amazing Mike um, you inspire me every day and I thank you I thank you for being an inspiration to the family and of course everybody else here so with that guys you know um, keep tuning in um, Yes, exactly. Alex, he is the most chill person, you know, and that's the same same thing that everybody always says. Mike, you might have any some some, some shout outs that you want to greet? Um, just to my music club team, uh, if they're tuning in, and to the, the HG Hedgehogs, our basketball team. And um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe family overseas? <laughs> Uh, yeah, to my mom in the States, uh, my Lola's there, um, just all my family in the States, the Ugali family, my Lola Nita, Grandpa, um, Auntie Kia, the Crane family, and um, yeah. <laughs> How about Australia, Mike? Is this watching you? <laughs> uh, I usually... Um, yeah, to Australia family too, uh, Mama Jess, Lolo, all those. Oh, another one more question here, Mike. How do you stay fit in uh, being a musician and being uh, a coach for basketball? What is your daily routine? Um, I think it just requires daily routine. Um, so lately, my my siblings and I would up uh, around 7 a.m. Then we'd work out. Um, I usually just get some some cardio in and just the, the basic weights just to keep myself in shape. So, because when you coach, um, mm -hmm. you're also going through the like the, the drills that you put your your players in or your students. So you mm -hmm. also have to keep that same physique and keep yourself in shape as well. Mm -hmm. um, there was something that you shared with me on learning a new instrument. Um, it's like learning a new, you were saying? Oh yeah, so uh, when you learn an instrument, your brain, um, it processes, processes that, what you're doing, uh, like you're learning an instrument. So it's, it's when mm -hmm. You learn an instrument, it's just a really unique thing to, to go about. And it's just, it's, it's pretty special. So with that, guys, you can learn more about Mike and, and all his workshops on his page, which is at Mikey Belasco. And I'm, I'll make sure to post his uh, handle and all his links of his performances so that you guys can check him out and be more inspired. So with that, guys, actions speak louder than words. And thank you for tuning in on another episode of In Love With Me. Thanks, Mike. Love you. Thank you for watching and love of me series.